Uh, it's recently come to my attention as I filed an appeal from a dangerous dog hearing from a decision that the dog is vicious. I was trying to get some answers on when the appeal was going to happen. I have tonight gotten some answers. This dog has been locked up since September. The hearing was not held until October. It was held within the 30 days. The decision wasn't rendered and, and served until December 5th, which already violates the time period. Um, I was being told by the department for a long time that uh, for about a month and a half that in order to have an appeal there are prerequisites for a valid appeal that is actually not in the code at all there is nothing mr zappa i think you will agree and uh it's uh 53.18.5 subsection q does not have anything in there about prerequisites and clearly if you're going to have an appeals process you either have one or you don't but you can't make it conditional because that does implicate due process rights and for better or worse, deprivation of property does implicate the Constitution and due process rights. And there are a number of concerns I have about, about a lot of these procedures that have come to light as I started to look at more of this. There are a lot of things that are very questionable under the Constitution that are being done um, with regard to these appeals and with regard to the hearings at all. A lot of it is just uh, time limits. Um, you know, these, a, lot of these don't, a lot of these statutes don't say exactly how long from the time uh, a dog is locked up uh, until you have a hearing. And, and just because there's no time in there, there are a lot of cases that spell that out, that say, you know, you can't have these unreasonable delays. The answer I've been given that if, if, if uh, by, by Mr. LaSalle, uh, when I complained about uh, due process violations in another case was if your client doesn't like it, she can sue the city for a writ. Um, which I don't think is a very reasonable solution because a lot of this is avoidable. A lot of it is avoidable just by playing by the rules and by considering due process, uh, you know, people's rights. Um, there's all kinds of things in here, you know, that, uh, you know, they talk about uh, on appeal. You can only bring up things that were that were uh, brought up, uh, raised in the appeal application. But what if you don't have enough information because you don't have the information? You have 15 days from the time the decision is rendered and sent which you may not get it for five days. Um, so then you have 10 days and you don't even know what, what information is in there necessarily <coughs> to put in the application. So if you can't bring up something that's in the application, you know, what do you do about other situations? It says that an appeal is only gonna be based on the hearing, uh, the record in front of the hearing examiner. What about when the, uh, when the recording of the hearing mysteriously gets erased? And there is no record really, because the recording that the city did is gone. What about when the officer lies? Is that considered new evidence? It's really not clear, and these are all things that need to be considered in an appeal regardless of what all of this stuff says if you want to give you know, real appeals.